Hello and welcome to Code with JV. Today I'm exploring the world of text-to-speech. I've found three free and open source libraries that I'm comparing against each other head-to-head -to, -head to see which one's the best for getting your computer to generate speech for you. There are a whole bunch of paid services out there where you can use APIs like Eleven Labs and whatnot to do a whole bunch of fancy stuff with voice, but today I'm really focusing on what can you do on your own machine, what can you do without paying anyone a dime. Let's jump into it. The first project I'm reviewing, Koki AI TTS. So if you go pip install TTS in Python, this will get you there. They're a commercial project which is built on top of this open source platform. They are shipping things quite recently. There was a release that went out yesterday and a patch that went out today. It's got a lot of stuff going on. It's a bit intimidating to jump into. There's a lot of academic papers that they link to, but it's also not too hard to get going once you find your way around. Pip install TTS will get you the command line tool. And if you want to train your own models, then you'll need to install the GitHub repo locally. Let's have a look at some things. I've got a TTS demo. So if we go TTS, then what's the simplest thing we can do is just get it to speak to us. But it saves the output into a file. So hello world. This is the default voice you get but they've got tons of voices that you can configure. All these settings here, yeah, you can tweak them. One of the things you can do, list models, you can see all the models that are available, and there's a lot of them. One tip is the ones towards the end of the list, like if you look at the English ones, the ones towards the end, they are more recently added. So I think Jenny was added earlier this year. If you start to say, okay, what does this model here sound like? You can copy it and then you can text whatever you want, model name. Helpful if you spell model correctly. Hello, I'm a different model. Different voice. These models, often they're a couple of gigabytes to download, so they can take some time. Now, the other thing you can do, TTS server, let's go with the same model name. Made the same mistake, didn't I? <laughs> One day you'll learn. And so when you start a server, you don't have to keep typing the text in. It'll run something on localhost 5002. We'll pull up a server. Whatever you want to say. So you can start to do this kind of thing. I found this is useful for when you get a voice that you really want to kick around a bit, fire up the server, throw some different things at it, see if you want to invest further in using that voice. That's the first things you can do is you can run on your command line, you can run a server. Okay, not too bad but you can also run it from Python. They've got quite a lot of examples in their docs about the sorts of things you can do. If we jump over to Python here, I've got a index.python, and here I've just got a couple of ones I was playing with. One of the most recent English models that they've got in here is the Jenny model. If we go into this Python index, it looks fairly similar than when you were typing it out with the terminal, but you can control a lot more settings and you can also save them so you don't have to keep typing which model you want, etc. Hello, this is Jenny. You can get weekly updates at codewithjv.com slash newsletter. Did you catch the Irish twang? If you look at Jenny, Jenny is from a public repo. They link to it in the docs of Koki. And here it's a... 30 hours voice data set and newspaper headlines, YouTube videos, books, transcripts from friends, a whole bunch of prompts, and you can download it. They've got a license, but basically it's saying if you use it to make a voice assistant, you have to call the voice Jenny. If you just generate the clips, you don't need the attribution notes welcome. Commercial use is fine. Don't do unfair things like claim it as your own. So it's just quite a generous license. That's the sort of thing which using the Kokri library and the data set of 30 hours the creators of this repo are able to create that model. So if you want to spend some time making a model, you can do that. If you don't want to spend some time, well, you can also just do some simple voice cloning. 
This is the JV model. I spent a minute recording some voice. Let's have a look at what this one sounds like. You'll notice they don't say letters very well, I found. You sound the letters out to get it. Hello, going. this is a clone JV. Maybe this is what I would sound like if I was born somewhere else in the world. Maybe? I can hear it a little bit in there, but not much. Like, that's the difference. You spend 30 hours recording quality stuff, you'll get a good, high-quality voice coming out. You spend a minute just throwing up some WAV files in there, you'll get less quality. The Koki crew, they've got a website. Like, they've, they're a business built on top of this library. They're investing in it. They're updating it. And essentially... First, put away your sword. They're doing things like voices for game characters. I've signed up to their free account. Here, they've got a whole bunch of characters as their sort of teaser to get people into their system. If you go in here... Only one of us walks out of here. First, put away your sword. Stuff I'd believe in a video game. Hey, if you think you might have it tough with AI coming your way, what do you think about the voice actors who are voicing for video games? High budget games might still use real actors, but the low budget games, you can see them moving to this tech pretty fast, right? I've made a testing project. Here, you've got emotions. So you can actually say, do you want your voice happy, sad, etc." Not too sure how they've done this using their library. You might need to play around a bit more. Why, hello there. How are you today? Why, hello there. How are you today? Why, hello there. How are you today? Messed around with this one a bit because they've got like this fancy editor where you can shrink words. Or if you turn the phoneme level on, you can shrink particular syllables of it and raise the pitch or the energy so you can really tweak the way you want. A lot of their thing is built so that you make multiple takes with the voices. And each time you do a take, they're slightly different. It's a little bit like ChatGPT being slightly different when you ask it the same question. They're doing the same for the tonation of the voice, just so people who can get exactly the voice they want out of it. Down here, you can say, Why, hello there. How are you today? Why, hello there. How are you today? Why, hello there. How are you today? You can start to stitch them all together to make scenes and dialogue between multiple characters, etc. All of that built on top of this library, which you can download and start to mess with. So, all right, next project. This is Mimic 3 from Mycroft, open source voice assistant business, but I don't know if they'll continue. They put out a notice in January that they had to downsize and weren't doing active development, but they've built a text-to-voice system called Mimic 3 designed to run on very cheap hardware like Raspberry Pis or computers without big graphics cards. So you can do this without the same compute load as the other one. It's got a fairly similar install path where if you start to say, hey, install this library and then get yourself the Mycroft Mimic library, you can start to just run it in the terminal, which is what I did. So if we go over to Mimic, here we can go, it's Mimic 3, and you just throw words at it. Hello world, I am Mimic. You may not have heard it, but my, my graphics card didn't spin up to do that kind of work. It's much less compute. But it's also a little bit more monotonous, I found, less emotion in there. So it's more suited towards voice assistants than mm. voicing video games. If we go to Mimic 3, it also has a server. When you run that server like this, here we can see this is the English one. A rainbow is a meteorological phenomenon that is caused by reflection. So you can start to do that. If you look at the English US, it actually has a bunch of different more names, but also a bunch of different speakers. A rainbow is a meteorological phenomenon that is caused by... Etc. I'm mentioning Mycroft because maybe you want to build a voice assistant and maybe you don't want to spend lots of compute having a fancy voice and you want to put it on a lower powered device. Mimic 3 would be what I'd definitely recommend for that use case. Whereas if you want to get a fancier voice assistant with more expressive voice, you may be able to resource the Koki setup to generate voice on the fly for you, but you'd probably see a bit more of a delay in there. All right, last one. This is my favorite one. This is Tortoise. It's mostly because it's just someone who has finished a computer science degree, bought like 15 NVIDIA graphics cards, and trained a model at home on 50,000 hours of voice. So really interesting. There's a great readme. Encourage you to look at it. They've found things like if you put, I am really sad, then it can start to change the intonation. They had a whole bunch of the ethical considerations where they basically did this work and realized how powerful their model was and how people could use it for fraud. And 
they were a bit conscious about whether they put this out there, but then they figured like, well, I'm just someone with a computer science degree and 15 graphics cards. Anyone's going to be able to do this. Therefore, they have built a tool for detecting tortoise. So they're, so they're thinking about, hey, can you spot when someone's generated using this data set? And here's a tool they, can, they ship with it. It's a cool library, but it's a little bit more complex to set up. Like you need to clone the repo. And I had a bit of a mongrel of a time doing this, getting versions right, because it was written a while ago. And if you use modern versions of Python, like 3.10 or 3.11, it wasn't working. I had to go down to 3.9 and then tweak some dependencies. So a non-trivial thing. If you want to run this and it's causing you pain, shout out, and maybe I'll be able to set you up a Docker file. Let's have a look at Tortoise. Here's Tortoise. The thing about Tortoise is there's only one model, but there's lots of voices. So Tortoise slash voices, you can see them all. You can call Tortoise, do TTS, takes text. All right, what voice do you want? What's one I haven't listened to? The ones with train in front of them are the higher quality ones. So they're ones which are closer to the training set, whereas the others are just folders where the author's gone and put like four or five sound files next to each other about 10 seconds long. Let's see what De Niro sounds like. The thing about Tortoise is it's slow and you must have an NVIDIA graphics card. So it's not a very efficient model, but the voices are really interesting. And the way they built it was inspired by the DALI image generator from OpenAI. It basically maps a voice into vector space where each of the numbers in the vector changes a little bit like the speed or the pitch or the volume or the voice defect. So lots of things about the quality of the voice. What it does is it samples all the wave files and then it says, oh, let's generate a vector based off that and use that vector to generate the voice. So it's kind of like a complete synthetic configuration. And you can actually save these vectors and not have it sample the files in doing this. And you'll see, oh, it's gonna be a minute 40 to generate just this sentence here. So while that's going, the other thing it does is it saves it all in a results folder. So here's a bunch of them that I was playing with. Did a JV clone again, the results, JV, the programmer's eyes were bright in the hope someone would subscribe to his YouTube channel. Not much better than the other one, but it was based off five little wave files next to each other. The programmer's eyes were bright in the hope someone would subscribe to his YouTube channel. The other thing you can do with Tortoise, which is interesting, is essentially it's got this, this Python read file. What it does is it reads a big chunk of text and then it narrates it for you. This is the idea of like make your own audiobooks. It takes ages, like you let it run overnight on a computer with a graphics card if you want to get this done in practice. What it will do is it will chunk up the file, make lots of little wave files, and it will stitch them all together in a big one, and you can get your own narrated book. This is the main use case of Tortoise if you actually want to use it, is for reading poetry or books or that kind of thing. Here's one that I messed around with. I didn't go for that long, but it still took like 20 minutes to run. All the stuff lives in long form. And I think it was Train Grace that I used. In the idyllic valley of Mongaroa River, just a stone's throw from Wellington, lived a devoted programming teacher named GV. His eyes, normally bright and sparkly, were dull. For many people would watch his videos, but few would subscribe. Yeah, subscribe. Let's go see what... Oh, here we go. This one's finished. If we go PA play results, usually it's prefixed by the speaker, so you can find them again. And I found... Would you like a Docker file? Comment below if so. Yeah. The, there's a couple of versions, and they've got slightly different intonations sometimes. Would you like a Docker file? Comment below if so. So that is Tortoise. And again, probably one of my favorites. In short, I would suggest Mimic if you're building a voice assistant. Koki, I think, is probably the best general purpose one, where you can start to do quite a lot of different things with it and go quite deep. And Tortoise, if you want to get something which can narrate text for you and build up long form audio, if you want to see another video about training models and building up some more custom things, let me know. Have fun.